this episode of what's going on with shipping, we're going to look at the impact of Hurricane Ida on the state of Louisiana and the Gulf Coast and how it impacts directly maritime shipping. Hi, I'm your host, Sal McCaglano, former Merchant Mariner, Chair of the Department of History, Criminal Justice and Political Science at Campbell University and an adjunct professor in maritime industry policy at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. And we're preparing to see the landfall here of Hurricane Ida, who's bouncing right now on the verge of becoming a Cat 5 hurricane coming ashore just southwest of New Orleans. Uh, Everyone has memories of Hurricane Katrina back in 2005. Uh, This hurricane is a little different for a variety of reasons. Number one, this hurricane did not sit as long in the Gulf of Mexico as Katrina, so it doesn't have that wall of water as high as Katrina when it came ashore. Uh, It's also following a little bit of a different path. Uh, Katrina went east of New Orleans. This one's going to go west of New Orleans, but that does put New Orleans in the danger circle. So the most dangerous area to be in a hurricane is a hurricane follows a track, and this one's following basically a uh, north-northwest track, is the area right around here, right here in the front right corner of it. That's the hurricane is moving forward. It's spinning clockwise, uh, counterclockwise. So you get the most winds there. And it's also where you get the most surge. Uh, This hurricane is expected to make uh, landfall this morning. Right to the west, as I said, of New Orleans in an area around Fushan. And this area here is key to maritime shipping in the area, particularly the offshore oil industry, which we're going to get into here. Uh, If you want to see where it is, all you could do is look at marine traffic and see the hole in the ocean right here. This hole right here is where you can see it also over here. A lot of these little blue dots here, these are fixed platforms out here that are not going to move. Some of the the images you'll see here are some images of of vessels before they're, they basically cut out. And if you superimpose on here, the wind scale, one of the things you begin to see right here, let's see if we can zoom in there. There we go is you start to see uh, the wind scale right right there. And you can see right here the black is where the hurricane is the most right here. Here's Huma right here coming ashore, Grand Isle right here. And this right here is the loop. Uh, and we're gonna talk a lot about the loop here in a second, the Louisiana oil offshore platform, uh, a major facility that's used for the export of oil from the United States. And it is right now in, the eye or coming out of the eye of this hurricane it's it squares square right in the in 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 the path of the hurricane and we're going to talk about the impacts of that as we go forward so a couple of stories right here uh this was from uh, g captain yesterday a reuters story workers flee 90 offshore facilities as extremely dangerous hurricane ida turns toward offshore oil fields (coughs) excuse me uh, oil companies uh, cut more than 1.6 million barrels of oil production as a storm churned toward the oil fields. It provides 70% of the national oil production. So one of the things that you should be you know right off the bat is one of the things, so you're not going to get like a deep water horizon type event here. Uh, oil companies will shut down facilities. They will shut down drilling. They'll shut, shut down production. They tap everything off for that. They make sure to cut it, which means there's going to be disruptions in the flow of oil and natural gas. And this has the potential to cause problems depending on how long it takes. If it's a day or two, not a big issue. Won't even see it. If it's longer than that, then you can have a scenario akin to what we saw with the Colonial Pipeline, except with the Colonial Pipeline, it was mass hysteria. Hopefully that doesn't happen here. Uh, We're seeing the cut down uh, right here. We see a little more in here. Oil companies had shut 59% of Gulf oil production, 49% natural gas output. According to the U.S. offshore regulator, a total of 90 offshore facilities were evacuated and 11 drilling vessels moved out of harm's way. So offshore facilities are tough to move. Those are the ones that are planted out there. You can't really move them. So you get people off to make sure should a, 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 a catastrophic collapse happen, nobody's on board. The drilling vessels are moved out of the way. And that's what you're seeing here. Uh, it goes on to here. It, this could be comparable to Hurricanes Laura and Harvey as far as intensity goes, said Joe Bartarsti, chief forecaster, for the two hurricanes with winds at least 130 miles an hour. And the worst case scenario could go as high as Category 5. And like I said, we're bouncing right there on it. During Katrina, a hurricane that wrecked havoc in Louisiana supplies were cut by up to 1.53 million barrels per day. 
projecting outages last for weeks due to damaged platforms and refineries. Last year's Delta shut in up to 1.69 million uh, barrels per day. So what we're seeing here is the potential for oil and refining capacity to be impacted. Uh, this means everything from uh, 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 natural gas production, gas to your f pumps, uh, nitrogen for farmers, you name it. This has huge implications coming down the road here. Uh, we're seeing this storm coming ashore here east, again, excuse me, west of the mouth of the Mississippi River here, southwest of New Orleans, and then churning right up across Mississippi and into eventually Tennessee. So impacts right off the bat, shipyards in the area are going to be hit. Bollinger Shipyard, which builds the fast response cutters for the U.S. Coast Guard, is ground zero right here. They're going to get hit pretty hard up in Pascoola, Ingalls Shipyard, that builds uh, LPDs for the uh, uh, U.S. Navy, uh, could get hit. Some of the smaller shipyards in the area that support the offshore oil industry can definitely get hit. So we're definitely going to see some impact here, especially in this area between the mouth and delta of, of the Mississippi River right here and over here toward Lake Charles area. This is the area you're going to see. Huma right here is going to be really significant because of the offshore oil industry, which we're going to talk about. So Gulf of Mexico, this is the Gulf of Mexico. And one of the things you see right here, this myriad of red lines and, and, and dots right here are offshore oil platforms and underwater oil pipelines. The Gulf of Mexico is inundated with them all over the place. Platforms, drilling facilities, and pipelines. Uh, if you go back to 2011, Deepwater Horizon, Deepwater Horizon was a research platform. It was basically a prospecting rig. And it taps into the ground, finds oil, caps it, and then in will come a production platform that will pull the oil up and usually through a pipeline, pump it ashore. And you create those facilities and you do it. Uh, over here down in the Gulf of Mexico, a little further down here, this is the Pemex facility. This is where earlier this year we saw the fire eye where an LNG uh, line uh, cracked uh, and uh, we saw um, liquefied natural gas come to service and ignite. We also just had a huge fire on a Pemex uh, facility that killed several oil workers. So this is an area of a lot going on right here. And as you get closer here, here's the coast of Louisiana. There's New Orleans right up here. Here's the Delta coming out of the Mississippi River. And right here, you can see these networks of offshore oil pipelines underground. Now, Hurricanes should not affect the pipelines. They're deep underwater. They shouldn't have an issue. Even when they come ashore, it really shouldn't be an issue. But what you're going to get are these shutdowns. These shutdowns are going to stop the flow of oil both ashore and then offshore, as we'll talk about here. So here, here's a story coming out of Huma today. This is their local news. Almost all Gulf oil production shuts down for Hurricane Ida. And the story says more than 90% of Gulf of Mexico oil production shut down Saturday as, as Ida churned through the western Gulf of Mexico toward an expected landfall near Morgan City. Morgan City, Fushan, these were the sites uh, of the offshore oil platforms, supply vessels, helicopters, everything that supports the oil platforms come out of Morgan City and Fushan. About 85% of the Gulf's natural gas production has been halted by midday. Workers have been evacuated from half of the 560 production platforms in the Gulf. Hundreds of Huma, uh, the Bode, and Southern Louisiana residents work on rigs and platforms. It is the industry in the area. And understand, it's been hit hard over the years. When fracking took hold in the early 2000s, this severely impacted offshore oil. It really ran the offshore oil industry down. And offshore oil had been in a big boom. They've been uh, prospecting and, 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 and delivering oil. But when fracking took place, it was it's much easier to frack on land than it is to prospect and, and, and drill for oil offshore. And this had a detrimental effect on the offshore oil industry. Ran a couple of companies out of business. Uh, Chesapeake uh, Oil uh, declared bankruptcy. Had a huge impact on it. And now here you see Hurricane Ida rolling in as a, her, a Cat 4 on the verge of a Cat 5. And now this is going to seriously impact 
the entire area. That's Port Fushan, this huge terminal right here where you have basically supply vessels. They bring all the material out, the rigs out, the mud, uh, all the material back and forth comes out of here. Uh, the Gulf produces 15% of the nation's oil, 5% of its national gas, according to the U.S. Uh, Energy Information Administration. So obviously a massive uh, area we're looking at here. You're talking about, it says 10 to 15 foot storm surge. I, the latest I saw was an 18 foot they're looking at coming ashore. You're going to be talking about closing bridges, uh, washing out roads, unable to move around, and it's just going to impact. Refineries in Louisiana will shut down. They process about 3.5 million barrels a day. They will shut down until they can ascertain whether the refineries have taken damage and whether the pipelines have taken damage. So that's going to all of a sudden happen. And what you're looking at here is a shutdown of potentially large measures. Small fraction of the 8 million barrels, it's 337 million gallons the U.S. consumes per day last year when demand was lower than normal because of the global uh, pandemic. Now uh, demand is back up there. So we're going to see this. Uh, Patrick DeHaan, the gas buddy guy, this is the guy who's always quoted in the news. Most need to fill up ahead of Hurricane Ida while a small nationwide gas price hike could happen. It's unlikely to lead to add to much beyond a nickel or dime. And since markets are closed over the weekend, this would be an impact felt next midweek. So basically, there's not a reason. Let's be clear. No reason to panic run. Again, oil and, and gas has been prepositioned in storage sites along the Colonial Pipeline, in the interior. We can handle a shutdown in the Gulf Coast for a period of time without having shortages. What creates shortages in the gas market is when everyone runs to the gas station and fills up every Pringle can they have. That's what causes the gas shortages. Go over here. Uh, market watch, uh, Hurricane Ida wildcard effects on U.S. energy supply. There's going to be speculation in the market. People are going to do this. This shutdown is going to cause a lot. Again, Louisiana 17 oil refineries count for nearly one fifth of the refining capacity, can process about 3.4 million barrels of crude per day. Remember, this is not going to impact Texas. Texas is really the heart of where we see the oil production. Where we may see some issues are pipelines and transfer facilities that may have to shut down across Louisiana into Mississippi that gets oil and gas up to the Northeast until they can assess the damage being done. Where this is going to have perhaps the biggest issue uh, is, is going to be in, in not so much the interior, but the exterior, the export of oil. Uh, export of oil is going to perhaps be the biggest, and that's because of this, what is referred to as the loop, the Louisiana oil offshore platform. This is the loop. Uh, the loop has been around for quite a while now. Uh, this is from their web page, their history page, uh, and they talk about this. Uh, Lupu received over 12 million barrels of foreign domestically processed crude oil since its inception. Uh, it was organized in 1972, uh, reformed into a, a limited liability company in 1996. Uh, it's the only port in the U.S. capable of delivering oil to ultra large and very large crude carriers. These are the monster super tankers that we talk about. The loop is basically an offshore platform with three large mooring buoys and oil tankers don't come into port. They tie up to these mooring buoys, they hook into them. And those mooring buoys are actually, are, are actually pipelines are actually floating oil pipelines. And what you do is you go to these single point mooring buoys and you connect to it. And this connects you to the, basically the interior of the United States by a pipeline. And what you start doing is you're able to export oil through the loop. That is the offshore production platform or the offshore distribution platform. You see it right here. Port consists of three single leg mooring buoys uh, and a marine terminal consisting of a two level pumping platform. That's this platform right here. This is the control center. These are the storage oil sites uh, ashore. And there's there's multiple actually. There's actually they actually use not just uh, 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 conventional tanks, but they actually use these large underground caverns and salt domes uh, to store up to 60 million barrels of oil. Uh, and, and again, they come out in these uh, pipelines uh, into the Gulf of Mexico, uh, the Mars pipeline and Thunder Horse, there's a whole series of them out there that feed into them. And they connect to the Cloverly hub, uh, which is basically a hub that goes into the interior of it. And what you see here, and I think I got a better map here for you. Yep. Here it is. This is the loop right here offshore. Here's the, the, the storage facility at Domley. Here's the loop pipelines that go out. 
And again, I think I got it better. Here it is. This is the loop right here. This little kind of three prong thing right here. Here is the loop. And then here's the uh, pipeline distribution system right here. And these are all oil pipelines that come in. And so for, for example, you can basically drill oil offshore, pump it ashore into a storage facility and then right into tankers uh, to send off. Uh, and you can send crude oil or you can refine it. It depends on it. And they have a whole, yep, yeah, there you go. Here's the whole connectivity scheme they have here where you can see how it's done. Over 12 billion barrels of crude received comes from a variety of different places. Uh, goes into the hub. You can send it off into the loop if you need to. You can send it to terminals. You can send it anywhere you want. It, it, it's a very large facility and great. The problem is this. That is the loop right there. And this is the eye of the hurricane right here. Unsure status of the loop, the facilities out there. If the uh, platform, you know, what, what kind of hits this platform is taking right now. It's designed to, to survive it. Hopefully it does without a problem. The mooring buoys are out there, uh, but this is going to be uh, a big disruption. If you zoom out here a little bit, let's get rid of the weather here for you so you don't have to look at the weather. And you can see how nobody is around the loop right now. Just nobody around right now. Again, you see oil off here, for example, off in Houston right now. If you see the Houston channel right here, everybody's diverting southward right here. North, south, they're going to go around right now. You can see the big anchorage right here off Houston. So oil tankers are there. Uh, you see uh, a lot of uh, smaller vessels here. A lot of tugs, a lot of offshore supply vessels. These are all out of Fushan and uh, uh, out of uh, Lake Charles. They're all basically just ran uh, to get into some cover right there. But you can see the oil right there. You can see some of these ships heading out. They're going to be uh, going around the very edge of the hurricane here, but with a loop right here and the loop anchorage right here and the hurricane coming ashore right in this area right here, we're going to have to see what exactly happens. Uh, not exactly sure. There's Grand Isle. Here is, again, the area right here. That is Fushan right there that you're seeing. So this is all going to have, obviously, a, a huge area, Morgan City. Uh, in the areas up here, you can see it up there, Huma right there. Uh, this is going to be disastrous for the offshore oil industry in particularly. So we'll see what happens here as Hurricane Ida comes ashore and what the impacts are going to be. For most of us, uh, I'm going to say we're going to see a, a brief impact here. Uh, we may see some spikes in some gas prices next week uh, as it goes in. Could we see some local shortages? Potentially. Uh, could see that depends on how long. Again, nothing is impacting here in Texas. So the Texas areas are up and running. Same thing over here, Florida, really. It's, it's very localized in Louisiana right now. Obviously, not being able to process from these offshore oil platforms. Again, let's go back to that map we got here. So obviously, from these facilities right here in Louisiana, that's going to be an issue coming ashore into these pipelines. Where I thought I had to the pipelines here. Let's go back here. That's going to be a factor as they come ashore. That distribution is, is going to cause some problems as you shut down some of these receiving areas. But again, the biggest thing is going to be watching how this hurricane develops as it comes ashore, impact it has. Uh, we will be seeing what happens here later on as it progresses. But again, you can see the, the movement. One of the great things about maritime transportation is you can move ships out of the way of these storms. But the problem is you can't move the shore facilities. And that's what you're seeing right now with the loop and uh, Morgan City, uh, uh, Port Charles, uh, Huma, and that area being hit. So we'll keep you up to date uh, as we get more information on the impact on the oil industry. I hope you enjoyed this video. Not a great topic, I know. Uh, I apologize. But if you did, please hit subscribe, hit the bell. Uh, be sure to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share across social media, and we will keep you up to date on the impact of Hurricane Ida and the maritime industry as it develops. This is Sal signing off.